Hey everyone, welcome back to the shop. Ever since the failure of the uh, DaVinci Mark I solid fuel engine, we've been working non-stop on the second iteration, which uh, you see here before you. We've just finished it up in the last couple of days. Uh, we've learned a lot from this last failure and we've used it to create hopefully a, a rock solid uh, design for our, our second prototype. So uh, what I'm going to do today is we're just going to go through the whole thing. Now that all of the parts are finished and it's ready to be fired, just go through, explain the changes that we've made from the last iteration, what's different, the stats on it, and how it's all going to work. So let's just jump into it. So let's start off here with the casing. So as you can see, this uh, new casing is quite a bit bigger than the old one. This is 18 inches long versus the old 12 inches. So, quite the size upgrade. Uh, with all the five and a half fuel grains crammed in it, that uh, gets us to the equivalent of a K973, I believe is its designation. It has about 2238 uh, newton seconds of total impulse. So, obviously it's a, it's a lot bigger motor than the old one. And because it's bigger, obviously it's a higher pressure. This motor was designed to be a lot higher pressure than that one and this is evident in the wall thickness of the casing it's, now it's quite the difference from the old one you can see it's more than three times it I think and there's a couple of reasons for that first as I said it's designed to be a higher pressure motor the the base baseline uh, operating pressure is uh, about 1100 psi so a lot higher than this. This was only built for around 500, and even still, the casing was a bit thin for the 500. So we didn't want to take any chances with another rupture due to that. So we beefed it up a little as, as our first precaution there. So the casing itself is pretty simple. Uh, as you can see, there's holes in it, unlike the welded bulkhead and the threaded design of the last time. But I'll go into that uh, design decision in a sec there. All right, so let's move on down to the uh, nozzle end of the uh, the motor. As you can see, there's quite a few uh, differences between the old old and the new prototypes. If you remember the last motor, as you can see here, it was held in by a, or the last nozzle was held in by a threaded retaining ring that just screwed on, and this is pretty standard across most uh, commercial reloadable commercial reloadable motors, but uh, this was really just a paint a machine. It was a little too finicky, and we weren't sure how well it was going to scale up to this size. So, for simplicity's sake, we opted for just a very simple just cap and set screw design. So, there's a little, this is the retainer, obviously. goes on, and then there's six bolts that hold it in like so. Now the nozzle itself is actually I just about identical uh, to the old one. Same size, we added an extra o-ring for better sealing. Uh, throat diameter is 0.51 inches or just under that. And this I believe was, this old one was a little bit larger. So this is or it was about the same, but the basic geometries between the two are the same. So the nozzle, besides the one O-ring, didn't change that much. The only real difference was the system in which it's retained. So hopefully this will be a bit more, this will hold up longer. It's a definitely a lot easier to uh, put together and to make manufacturing-wise. So this should be a big improvement on the nozzle end. Now we have the uh, bulkhead. Now the bulkhead, we really wanted to sit down and take a look at the whole design of that because that is where we had our failure with our old motor. So as you might remember, the way the old one worked is there was a welded retaining ring, just a little lip on the end of the casing, and the bulkhead slid up and rested against that. And the welding was just a very, turns out, very bad idea to begin with. Uh, it kind of annealed the whole casing, so it lost a lot of its strength wasn't very strong and like as you can see it did it failed kind of along the weld there so 
poor design choice, and that's what we're fixing here. Now with this new version, we've got this kind of a two-piece system here, inspired in part by uh, some of MIT's motors. So the bulk, this is the bulkhead itself. Uh, it's pretty small, similar to the last one. I would show you the last one, but we never found it after the uh, Kato, so I'm basing it off memory. <laughs> but anyways, you've got the just a very basic uh, ceiling system on the outside. A brass plug here for future head-end ignition experiments. For the first test, we're not we're not going to be using that, but we will be able to experiment with um, head-end ignition if we want. So obviously that, I'm not gonna push it all the way in, but that just goes in there, slides down. And then to retain it, we've got it, we, its own separate ring here. And this is obviously very simple, just a ring tapped for six quarter 20 bolts. So once you've got the bulkhead down where it needs to be, follow it up with this, screw these stainless set screws in, and that'll hold it all in place. And the reason it's the two-piece design choice was just for simplicity of manufacturing because it would have kind of been a pain to make something that was all one piece like this and it makes it a little bit more modular uh, easy to assemble and all just because putting two smaller pieces down the, the uh, casing is a lot easier than putting one giant unwieldy piece so this is hopefully quite the improvement over the last uh, design. Obviously, strength-wise, there's the six, the six quarter 20 stainless steel set screws. So each of these has a sheer strength of, I believe, 2,200 pounds. And then with the 100, uh, 1,100 PSI chamber pressure multiplied by the uh, area of the chamber, which is, I forget the exact number, but when it comes down to it, the set screws have about uh, six times the required strength to hold all of this in. So the force that is going to be exerted on the bulkhead will be nowhere near the failure, failure point of these screws. And they're all, they go through the whole casing and the whole ring. So no chance of either of those joints failing either. So hopefully this will be a quite the improvement on the old system. Don't expect, or I hope not to see any failures there. But yeah, that's the, uh, the bulkhead end of the motor. Now finally, and most importantly, arguably, uh, we had to rethink and redesign the fuel for the motor, and, or the, at least the method of uh, putting in the fuel. So the actual reason this motor failed, or part of it, part of it was the bulkhead, part of it was a thermal failure. Because the way we had done this, our grains were basically cast into uh, molds where they just had a bunch of craft paper wrapped around them. Craft paper, craft paper was not thick enough, and we had some gaps up near the top of the bulkhead, so there was a lot of uh, exhaust gases able to very easily heat the casing and that contributed to the, the failure that you see here. So with this new motor, you want to be extra careful, make sure we have very good thermal protection, uh, very, very tight fit, make sure there's no exposed uh, pieces of the casing so we have no chance of any burn throughs because burn throughs are bad. So what we've, what we've gone with is same fuel as before. Uh, what the fuel is, is our homemade uh, silicone APCP, which is just a uh, very simple uh, household silicone, like 100% silicone you can buy for, for sealing bathtubs and stuff, 65% uh, AP, 22% silicone, and 13% uh, aluminum powder. Very high mesh, all of those. But we've, we've used this in the past then it had a lot of good results with it. As you can see, it, it casts a very uniform and consistent grain. So we have no problem with the uh, fuel itself. And the main thing we focused on, obviously, was the liner. So the paper liners, obviously, not a great idea, or at least when we did them, it, when we did them like we did last time. So 
And with this new motor, we've actually decided to go with a PVC liner. Now this is a pretty experimental idea, uh, not something you see a lot in uh, experimental rocketry, but I did some digging. I found some people who've had success with it. And one of the reasons I wanted to do it was just coincidentally, I picked up one of these couplers at Ace and they fit like absolutely perfectly in the, in the motor there. There's hardly any slop. So that made things really easily, really easy and convenient uh, to cast into. I bored them out, so we have about a hundred or so thou, or a little more than that actually, uh, on the, the wall thickness of that. And obviously I wanted to do some testing on this because I wasn't sure. So I made a small scale uh, grain, cast it into a smaller tube, did a full burn on it, uh, unexposed obviously, not in the motor, but I wrapped the outside with the tin foil to kind of simulate a casing, and then slapped some heat indicator stickers on it. So as you can see, the PVC is in great shape, minus this part, but this part was exposed to a lot of just stray exhaust gases. This is where it was actually like, like shooting out, but like you can still see the writing and stuff all over the PVC, didn't get too hot at all, and the stickers indicated that the outside of this did not get more than 250 degrees during the burn, and it was a pretty violent burn, so. <laughs> I'll call this a success. So this gave me a uh, pretty good, pretty good hope and confidence to move forward with the PVC grains for this motor. So we've got a couple of them cast and finished up here. These have a core diameter of uh, 0.5 inches. Uh, obviously that's the same as the throat diameter as this. So I'm going to drill out the first two to a little bit more, maybe 5 eighths or something to make sure we don't have any problems with erosive burning. These last three and a half haven't been faced off or cored yet, so they're still a little bit ugly looking. And lastly, and most importantly, we have the final grain to cap it off. So the sizing of the thing didn't allow for a completely uniform number of grains, like a whole number of grains. So we kind of had the half grain one, and that's what you see here. Has yet to be cored, we'll do that later. But what this is, obviously, is a PVC end cap of the same size, so fits in there just as well, uh, very convenient. And this, this is just a very convenient shape to use because obviously we have this kind of covering of PVC where it bends around and faces and covers the, a little bit of the face here. So normally you, you have to be concerned you know, what, where if you just had a Bates grain butting up against the uh, bulkhead here, you, you might have a concern where you might want to make a shoulder or something that the PVC can like slip down into because you don't want any gaps or exhaust gases can get out and cause burn throughs. Those aren't good. So but with this, it's very convenient because we kind of already have a layer of thermal protection around that corner cutting off that gap. So this butts up against the head end ignition there and we're basically all set thermal wise even down into that crack there. So this is just a convenient way of and uh, finishing off the grains while providing a fair bit of very convenient thermal protection as well. So yeah, that's basically the whole the whole motor there. Um, now this particular engine isn't a uh, uniform size. It's, it's unfortunately too big to be 54 millimeters. It's a uh, 2.4 something inches total, but have no fear. I've found that it, fit, it fits quite wonderfully into the 2.6 inch or 2. Point, yes, 2.6 inch uh, lock precision couplers. So we can and will fly this in a rocket, or it's, obviously it's going to be a minimum diameter rocket. This will be fiberglass, but it fits very snugly and nicely into these uh, couplers here. So. Luckily, it will it will be able to be used with other commercial uh, rocket hardware, and that was also the kind of point of using the set screws is that so we can get them flush, so it can fit up into a motor tube. Uh, but yeah, that's pretty much it. Um, this thing should be fired within the next week or so once all the grains are finished up curing, 
and we've got our test stand ready to go. But that's where we're pretty much done. We're looking forward to the test. And uh, thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.